my name is Anand Agarwal. I'm the founder and CEO of edX. When COVID took the world by storm about a year and a half ago, around February or March of uh, 2020, the entire world was working in person and studying, learning in person. But after the pandemic hit around February or March, the whole world went to working and learning online. Even in colleges and university campuses, all the learning completely went online from 0% online to 100% online. That experience enabled faculty and students to give online learning a try. And what they found was that online learning was actually quite good. There were many aspects of online learning that were good. And there are some aspects of in-person learning that they missed, but overall, they enjoyed the online learning experience. So what the pandemic episode taught us was that we could have widespread technology enabled learning all over the world and uh, it could be enjoyed by people. And in fact, today, learners and educators, 60, 65, 66% of them are telling us that they want to see more technology enabled learning, more online learning, even after we have vaccinations and uh, the whole pandemic shifts and we get into a more normal world. What we also saw was that online learning and technology enabled learning dramatically increased access to learning. Everybody everywhere had access to learning in a way that was simply not possible when people had to go onto campus. So I would say the two big learnings was that, two big learnings were that one, technology enabled online learning is possible and a broad majority of faculty and students liked it. And at the same time, it also increased access for learning to students all over the world. Today, in a really fast moving world, as the future of work is upon us, we realize that in the future, half of today's jobs will be gone by 2030. They will be transformed into new areas. People will need new skills. And these skills trainings have to happen at a planet scale. We've learned that degrees may, degrees may just not quite be the answer for all of that because degrees take too long. Uh, the one, two years, four years, they're expensive. Uh, imagine if you're 35 years old and you're working in a company and you need to upskill, you have a couple of children, the chances of you going back to campus to get another one or two year degree are virtually zero. Instead, people are looking to get skills, earn certificates, so that they can upskill and reskill for the future of work. Platforms like edX are really geared up to handle the challenge of creating planet scale reskilling. And in fact, edX is a leader in the space of reskilling and upskilling. edX has about 3000 short courses and programs that enable people to upskill in areas like AI, machine learning, data science, uh, business skills, leadership, and also many soft skills that are very important in the working place uh, today. edX provides these skills and also certifications. edX provides certifications like micro bachelor's programs and micro master's programs. Micro master's, for example, are about one third to one fourth the size of a master's degree and can can give you incredible skills in a very short period of time, completely online. You don't have to go to campus to earn a micro master's. So for example, you can earn a micro master's in supply chain management from MIT. You could earn micro master's in marketing analytics from UC Berkeley. And the beauty of these skills and certifications is that people can earn them in a very short amount of time. And edX is a leader in this space. In fact, uh, in in about the eight or nine years since edX was founded, edX has given out 2 million certifications for people looking to upskill and reskill. And so this large, large catalog of courses and programs from some of the top institutions in the world, like MIT, Harvard, 
Oxford, Cambridge, Berkeley, as well as top companies like IBM, Google, uh, AWS, and others are enabling, enabling people to upskill and reskill for the future of work at a pace that was never possible before. I don't think that the entry of a number of players into the market, whether the primary the learning market or the post-secondary college or high school market uh, is going to make a huge difference. And the reason is that the total market, the size of the number of people that want to learn is huge. India has a population of over a billion. And even if 10, 20, 30 percent of those people want to get upskilled and reskilled, we are talking hundreds of millions of learners from India alone. And so I think we could use many more players in this landscape in order to upskill and reskill people, whether in the high school area or in the uh, uh, college areas. Um, edX itself has on the order of uh, 6 million learners in India alone. And that is still well short of the huge market that uh, the Indian subcontinent represents. You know, a higher level answer to this question of ethical implications of technology in education is that truly ethically, we should be providing equal access to learning for anybody anywhere who wants to learn. Education is after all a human right and everybody needs to get access to it. So to me, the most important, the most important ethical implication of education and technology in education is that we need to create access for everybody and equal access. Now, once people learn online, there are other issues that come up. So one of the issues that has come up is that how do we make sure that the integrity of the exams are maintained? How do we prevent cheating online? Today on edX, for instance, we have many technologies that enable universities to proctor exams and so on in a way that uh, students are not able to cheat. So as an example, uh, when people sit down for an exam for a MicroMaster certificate, for instance, uh, we use technologies where they are watched by a video camera. And the video camera records them as they are taking the exam. And they're also prevented uh, on, their, uh, on their computers. Uh, the access to websites that are external and so on are prevented. So they have to be working and they're watched. And uh, these videos, are monitored by machine learning technology or by real humans watching it. And so if there are any issues that are flagged, then a human watches it and uh, the student is warned or the exam may be annulled. And so there are many technologies today that enable the virtual proctoring at a scale that is unprecedented and can compete with the kind of proctoring you see in exam halls. You know, it's a funny, it's a funny challenge where on the one hand, we want to create increased access to technology and education so that anybody who wants to learn can learn online. Similarly, on the other hand, too much technology can also be a bad thing because it creates a, a disconnect between the people learning and personal interaction with the other human beings. I think we need to strike a balance. I think everybody needs to have access to technology, at least at some minimal level. You need access to broadband, access to a computing device, so you can get learning. Uh, and today, a lot of the content is available for free. On edX, for example, every one of our courses, virtually all of our courses, have a free audit track. And so some access to technology is critical for everybody. At the same time, for people that are learning online, it is very important that they also take some time to interact with others, uh, either uh, in person or interact with the teachers. And uh, this way they get more of the personal connection. And so we need to create a balance. So in summary, 
I think is very important for everybody to have at least some access to technology in order to learn. And then at the same time, the few people that are overusing technology for learning and not engaging in in-person interaction need to think about that and change their styles and do some in-person interaction as well. So both the extremes are not very good. edX has uh, over 3,000 courses from 170 of the world's top institutions, um, universities, companies, and uh, uh, other organizations. Our courses range in topics like uh, what you might call the tech fields, uh, like data science and computer science and AI, machine learning, um, uh, business fields where they learn about marketing or finance or accounting. And there are also a number of courses in the humanities, whether it's history, whether it's culture, whether it's languages. And yes, you can learn language and you can learn the humanities online. At the same time, we would love to see a broader range of courses, not just in different topics, but also courses that, are, that go all the way from absolutely introductory courses to the, more, uh, to the most advanced set of courses. So within any given topic, I would love to see a broader set of levels of difficulty all the way from absolutely basic to the most complicated so that people have a full suite. At the same time, I would love to see more depth in many other areas. So for example, I would, see, I would love to see even more courses in the public health or healthcare areas. We see huge demand on edX for courses in public health and healthcare. In fact, uh, Harvard and the Mass General Hospital launched a course on edX about a year ago on how to use mechanical ventilators for COVID treatment. And that course had 300,000 healthcare professionals take that course from all over the world. Uh, you know, a nurse from Brooklyn, New York, a, uh, uh, a surgeon from Chennai in India, a OBGYN from Colombia. We had healthcare professionals from all over the world. There's a huge demand for that. So I would like to see both deeper courses that go all the way from the basics to uh, the most complicated as well as more breadth in many, many fields, including the humanities and healthcare. In particular, we are seeing a particularly great demand for what we call soft skills courses, uh, what you might call human skills or even power skills. These are courses on critical thinking, um, uh, teamwork, public speaking, making presentations, um, how do you, storytelling, these are all examples where we could use even more courses. And these are becoming very, very popular, uh, particularly in corporations uh, post-COVID. So we've read about a lot of these studies that talk about the future of work, where half the world's population will be out of a job. Because the whole market, the whole the workplace is transforming as automation, AI, machine learning, completely change the nature of work. People have to be upskilled and reskilled in order to be able to address this future of work. You will see more and more jobs in fields like automation, in fields like uh, data science, uh, machine learning applied to virtually everything. These are all gonna be extremely important. And so on edX, for example, we're seeing a huge demand for these upskilling courses uh, to tackle the future of work. And the job market will reflect the future of work where people that have the right set of skills, whether it's business, data science, or computer science programming, as well as human skills like teamwork, leadership, critical thinking, uh, writing, uh, those combinations of the tech skills and the soft skills will really enable people to excel and thrive in the future job market. Before the pandemic, most of the learning was in person, but during the pandemic, the whole world moved to learning online. In fact, 100% of learners in schools and colleges began to learn online. And my prediction is that the future of learning will be blended where even after we get vaccinations and 
ultimately the pandemic dies down, people will not go back to zero online learning. Online learning is, in, is now part of everyone's DNA. And my belief is that it will never go down to zero, but the future of learning will be blended, even in college campuses where I predict that over the next 10 years, learning will be a combination of in-person and online. And over the next two to five years, I expect that it could be about 50% online and 50% in-person. I also expect in terms of topics, there'll be a renewed focus on the humanities and soft skills. I know the past 10 years has had a huge focus on tech, on data science, computer science, and business. But I think in the next 10 years, we will also see a big shift to the humanities and the more hybrid skills. So in short, over the next 10 years, I see two big shifts. One, I see a shift to blended learning, which is a hybrid of in-person and online. I see also a shift to hybrid skills, a blend of tech skills and soft skills. But these are two big ones that I expect. As I think about it, I also think that short certifications and short programs will also become extremely important where more and more people will be looking for upskilling and reskilling using shorter programs, modular programs like micromasters and micro bachelors rather than going to full degree. So I see a shift to shorter, more modular programming. Online education has been transforming incredibly rapidly. What we, do, uh, what we are doing today is nothing like what online learning was 20 or 25 or 30 years ago. And remember, online learning has been around for 30, 40 years. But today's online learning is very different from what it was in the past. What is interesting is that over the next 10 years, online learning will also be so much more advanced than online learning is today. And the best analogy I would use is the smartphone. Just imagine the mobile phone in the 80s. Uh, it was big and huge and bolted to a car with a big power connection. But today's smartphones are small and, and lightweight and can be held in the palm of your hand and you can do all kinds of things with it beyond just uh, making a phone call. Similarly, learning will advance very rapidly, particularly online learning as we bring more and more technologies into it. We'll see advances both in the technology and also in the pedagogy and also in credential. So let's talk about each one of them. In terms of technology, I expect that AI, machine learning, AR, VR are gonna create huge changes and shifts in how online learning is done. By bringing online, by bringing AI and machine learning into learning, we will create more personalized forms of education. By bringing in AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality into learning, we'll be able to see more of these virtual laboratories. Uh, the second area will be in credentialing. Uh, you know, in the past, all we had was a degree, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD, which took four years, five years, uh, or one or two years for a master's. In the future, I see that there'll be a blend. We'll have many smaller credentials like micro masters and micro bachelors, which you can earn in about six months. We'll also see modular stackable pathways into degrees where people will complete these modular micro bachelors and micro masters and stack them up to get full degrees. So huge changes in credentialing. And then finally, third, we'll see big changes in pedagogy. A pedagogy is about how teaching is done. Um, there's been a lot of research in uh, cognitive science and we will see many of these cognitive science techniques and neuroscience techniques applied to making learning even better so that the outcomes are even better. So I think three big shifts. One is uh, tech-enabled learning will advance because of uh, machine learning and AI. We will see huge changes in credentialing, particularly towards modular stackable credentials. And third, we will see much better pedagogies for learning where outcomes are gonna be significantly better because of uh, neuroscience and cognitive science, et cetera. You know, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because Education will keep evolving. Unlike in-person education, which really hasn't changed a whole lot in hundreds of years. You know, 100 years ago, 
you went to a classroom, you saw students sitting on in benches, people in the last few benches sleeping, and the lecturer standing on the podium and lecturing at everybody else. I mean, that model hasn't changed in hundreds of years. We see pictures of that from ancient history uh, to today. With online learning, online learning is a rapidly moving field. And so uh, almost every year, the current model of online learning is replaced by evolved models. So I think the current model of online learning is an evolution where the model continues to improve and we'll just keep doing this and improving year upon year and it will simply keep getting better and better. It's almost like asking a question um, when we had mobile phones in the 90s, will the current, model, the current model of mobile phones go away? Well, the exact form of the mobile phone went away but it kept evolving into better and better phones. Similarly, today's online learning will not exist within a few years in its exact same form, but online learning will exist and continue to evolve with AI, machine learning, cognitive science approaches, augmented reality, virtual reality, and so on. So the future looks incredibly bright and hopeful for online learning. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really great uh, chatting with you all. And, uh, Maybe one of these days we'll see each other in person. Thank you.